All right, this is a 13-year-old dog that has uh, a bit of a heart murmur, and um, we're going to take a look and see if we can find out why today. So we've got a, that's a nice image of his heart right there, and we'll see if we can make just a few adjustments in that. I'm going to take a little far field down. Let's see. So that looks like a pretty nice image. Now the first thing I see here is he's got a slightly larger left atrium than um, the right atrium. In this plane we'll go ahead and put some color there and see if we can pick up anything. Yep, and there is a lesion right there. So we do have uh, some mitral regurgitation that you can see fairly clearly there. Let me see if I can come at it. There's a nice picture of it. So you can see the valves open here. And when they're closed, we're picking up a signal that indicates some retrograde movement of blood or some regurgitation. And that will produce a heart murmur and it will also produce an enlarged left atrium. And you can see it pretty clearly there. So we should be able to get that to come in here. So we'll put a pulse wave Doppler on it. There it is. So you can hear it and also see it. Let's take that off and see if we can get a... There it is again. So if we take the PRF up... That might be too much. Let's see if we can realign ourselves. And we'll come back at that again from another direction, but we can see that we've got a velocity that's approaching around five or so. So we can see the aortic valve very clearly here. We can see there is look a little bit of mitral valve prolapse there that we can see maybe just a little bit of outward bowing of both of those valves. It does look like it's extending a little further than the valve annula. So that would probably be classified as some, some uh, prolapse of that valve. So now we can go into M mode and do some measurements. Let me get a pretty good M mode view there. like to go up just below the valve. There we go. And so now, it looks like a pretty good spot. We'll pick an appropriate spot and we can measure for our end diastole and our systolic measurements here. And we can see the data that comes up right there. So, a little low in, in ejection fraction and fractional shortening for a dog that has mitral valve regurgitation. We like to see that up a little higher, even though it's still in the normal range. And, what does he weigh, 40? All right, and so for 44, again, we're not seeing too much then as far as anything else is looking for significant uh, patterns of hypertrophy. So that looks pretty good. So we can come in here and measure. You can really see that image is just so clear. You can see you can see full aortic valve opening and closure. We can see a little flutter 
right here in the uh, in the leaflet there, and that's probably due to um, you know some of the activity on the mitral valve, the way the valve uh, aortic valve is is uh, is fluttering there. We can see very clearly um, the the closure and the opening of the aortic valve through there. That's a nice image. But what we can do also is we can get kind of a rough approximation of the size comparison of the left atrium to the aortic um, aortic valve, or the I'm sorry, the aortic outflow tract. There we go. So that's a pretty decent ratio. And now we can go up. and look at the pulmonary outflow tract here, the right ventricular outflow tract. We can put some color on that. And we can see he does have a little bit of pulmonary insufficiency there. And again, when the valve is open, we can see the synchronization here to the EKG, so we can follow a few cardiac cycles. Watching here, at uh, right after the contraction, we're going to see a, uh, a uniform exit of blood leaving the right ventricle, and we have valve closure, and then we can still see a retrograde movement of blood there through the, uh, the defect in that pulmonic valve. So again, here, a little bit there, also a little bit of leakage. Contraction, all the blood is exiting, so it's nice uniform uh, laminar flow of blood. And then we're seeing just a little bit of pulmonary insufficiency there, a little flame that's coming up. And we can should be able to get that to display with pulse wave. We can't get that from that angle, so we'll try a slightly different angle. We should be able to get it from there. There it is. So this then retrograde movement of blood indicates the, the uh, leakage at the pulmonic valve. So you can measure that and get a pressure half time from that. So if we go down here to pulmonary artery, um, it should allow us the ability to measure that and calculate all of the pressure and velocity gradients for us, which is handy. While we're here, we can also measure the pulmonary artery here. Oops, I got to do the this here. There's the pressure half time. I had the wrong the wrong setting. So there's your pressure half time and your uh, pressure gradients then. And you can hear it too. You can hear the spray. to avoid that the click of the valve that those white spikes mm -hmm. what you need to do is uh, to increase the filters which oh okay the key that let's is do the that soft gear right there in case you see go ahead see what it does it be ah, gotcha so that is better so you're taking out some of the valve noise exactly it is a cleaner signal mm -hmm. And you can increase it. Uh, again, what it's going to do, it's going to cut the low frequencies close to the baseline. Okay. okay. That is what it's going to do. So you, you will cut the click of the valve. Okay. And it works for a uh, continuous wave then too? Yes, exactly the same. It is right. set higher to avoid noise. The continuous wave is more prone to noise. So okay.
Yeah, that's a nice Change thing. Right. Yeah, that's a better signal. All right, we're going to flip him over then. Again, you can see the pulmonary insufficiency there. It's not very big. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't need any more problems. Yeah. <laughs> One meters per second on a human would be yeah, just we like can that. I mean, everybody has Oh, it, definitely. So. Yeah, we won't worry about that. Mm -hmm. But it's nice because this is a relatively insignificant lesion, you know, and it, it would be within the normal physiological norm. Yeah. But to be able to get that dis to display as oh, well yeah, as yeah, it yeah. did, yeah. you know, it speaks to the sensitivity of the machine sure. because it, you can, you can, even a minor lesion, you can get a, a measurement mm -hmm. off of. And that's great mm -hmm. if you have a concern that there could be some pulmonary hypertension. You've been watching an actual study from the Animal Hospital of Woodstock, Illinois with Dr. Jay Randall. On a typical day, Dr. J performs four to six ultrasound studies before noon. It allows him to give a better diagnosis while keeping his patients in-house for treatment. That's important. Dr. J is using a MyLab Class C ultrasound from SAOTE North America, sold exclusively by Vettel Diagnostics. This study was performed on the second day following installation of this MyLab unit. It was part of on-site training provided by Vettel and SAOTE. Want to see if ultrasound technology is a fit for your practice? Call to schedule a free 20-minute no-obligation consultation today. To schedule your free consultation, call 800-458-8890 or visit the contact page at VettelDiagnostics.com. The MyLab Ultrasound Series from Vettel Diagnostics the veterinarian's imaging company.